So last time we learned about acyclic coloring. We defined acyclic coloring and star coloring. So acyclic coloring is a coloring where if you partition the color classes, partition the vertices into color classes, and if you take uh, two color class, xi and xj, then the graph that they together induce is a forest. Then this holds for all ij, then this is an acyclic coloring. Furthermore, if the graph that they induce is a star forest, then this is a star coloring. So in other words, star coloring is that if you, no matter what four vertex path you take, it contains at least three colors. If it contains two colors, let's say this is red and this is bl black, then there is P4, this is P4, passing on four vertices between, I mean, two color class, which means that this is not a star forest. So this is some, this is forbidden. So forbidding this and ensuring that uh, every two classes induces a star forest are the same thing. So for this coloring, of course the question is that uh, what's the relationship between star chromatic number and the maximum degree of the graph. And 2004, 13 last poll read proved that the uh, star chromatic number is always and most some constant times the maximum degree to the 3 over 2. And also they show that there are graphs G, I mean, moreover, infinitely many graphs G, such that its chromatic number is some constant times maximum degree to the 3 over 2 divided by log to the half. And both of the bounds, they use the probability method to prove this. Instead of proving that, we want to just prove the quadratic upper bound here. <coughs> so, assume we have a star coloring. Then every, I mean, two xi and xj we take, we have some star forest. And in this star forest, you, I mean, so you have this star forest. And what we want to do is we want to make the connection between orientation of graphs with uh, this star coloring. So for example, if we orient all the edges towards the center vertex, say here, if we have K2, then you choose one as a center arbitrary, then you get this orientation. And in this orientation, this gives the, gives the orientation for all these edges. And for different ij, you can do the same. And you can do the same. Then for each edge e of g, this edge is always between two color class because this partitions the graph so that the, each of them are independent. So every edge is oriented from this. In here, we can get some special, I mean, some observation. Whenever you see a four vertex path, with this orientation, 
no sorry let's say whenever you see or say three vertex path then the if this has two color so these two are same color and this is one color then it's always oriented towards middle because this means if you take the red color class and blue color class you get a star forest if there is a path with three vertices then it's always oriented in the middle and this property actually is roughly equivalent with no three colored no two colored people because if you have a four vertex path and if it is colored with two color then what happens if this property holds then this two has to be oriented to the middle and this on the, on the other hand, I mean, if you take the this three vertex, then this also has to be oriented in the middle. So we get a contradiction here that this cannot be oriented in, in either way. So this implies no two colored P4. And then similarly, you can actually show that no two colored P4 imply forbidding this structure. So this actually provides some other way of writing the definition of star coloring. So by using that, we can, I mean, it helps us to prove the quadratic upper bound in an easier way. So from this motivation, let's define this. A proper coloring of a graph G is an in coloring or an orientation say D if for every two colored three vertex path in G the two edges are oriented in D towards the <coughs> middle vertex. So this, I mean, give us this definition. So we have coloring and orientation, and then we say that this coloring is an in coloring for some, for the orientation D, if that happens. Then we can make this intuition rigorous. So these two are the roughly the equivalent thing. Is that uh, I mean it can be captured by this lemma. A coloring of a graph is a star coloring if and only if it is an in coloring for some orientation of G. So this direction, let's prove this direction. If we have a star coloring F, Then each edge lies in exactly one star forest. Induced by two colors. Because 
its end point has different color. What we do is we do as we did here. We orient the edges. towards the center of the stars in each such forest. Then it's easy to check that the app is on in coloring. I mean, for this orientation. Because of exactly this reason. So there is no two color, colored P4. And conversely, if F is on in coloring, for an orientation of G, then the middle edge of any two colored four vertex paths have to be oriented in both directions. So there are no two colored paths. So this shows that it is indeed a star coloring. <clears throat> so by using that, we can prove the following quadrat. I mean, following theorem, which is the quadratic upper bound. Albertson, Chappell, Kirstead. Kuntgen, Ramon in 2004 prove this. I mean, with this idea, we can do the greedy coloring in a way that, I mean, we, in a way that's compatible with some orientation. So by doing that, we can show that if a graph G has an acyclic orientation with maximum in degree R, then we can show that its star chromatic number is at most 1 plus R times delta of G. So proof is again, I mean, as I mentioned, we want to do the greedy algorithm with this orientation. So let D be such an algorithm, such an orientation. So this is a cyclic orientation. And let V1 to Vn be an ordering. the vertices, which is obtained by iteratively deleting sources. So sources, the sources are the vertices, which 
has in degree zero. Because this D is an acyclic orientation, there must be some sources. Because otherwise, if you have a vertex, if it is not source, then there must be an in neighbor. And if this is not source, there must be an in neighbor. You can keep go going this until you come to the certain point that you have visited before. And that gives us a cycle. So this is a contradiction that the, this orientation D is acyclic. Acyclic meaning is it doesn't contain any directed cycle. So any acyclic orientation, you can find the source. And any subgraph, subgraph, I mean, you have this orientation and then you delete some vertices. Then remaining graph has this sub-orientation, and then that's also acyclic. So you can keep finding the sources. In this ordering, every edge is oriented from lower index to higher index. And now we want to use this to color the vertices, this ordering. So we want to use color the vertices one by one. How? When, when we color VI, use the list color, list indexed color, I mean, that has not already been used in the close neighborhood. earlier neighbors of VI. So we have this V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. What do we want to avoid? We want to avoid a situation that uh, we have three vertices so that uh, these two have the same color. And then this one is in the middle. And then the edges are oriented outward. This is the situation that we want to avoid. Once this appears in this ordering, because every edge is oriented from lower to lower to higher, this can only happen with this orientation in this way. So what we want to do is if this is blue and if this is green, then when we color this vertex, we don't want to use blue and we don't want to use green. If we use green, then we would get this. So what we want to do is we want to take the earlier neighbor, earlier neighbor of this, and then we consider its close neighborhood, meaning that itself and all of its neighbor. So this neighborhood as an undirected graph. And then we want to avoid all the colors there. In D, the vertex VI has a most R earlier neighbor. So we don't have to consider the, its neighborhood here because we only consider the earlier neighbor. Put, I mean earlier neighbor of this VI because even if we have say this let's say this is let's say this this is purple but now here even if we color it with purple I mean it doesn't cause any immediate problem because we could have I mean, purple vertex and purple vertex and some other vertex. D 
this path of length 3 is okay. This is allowed. So even if these two have the same color, I mean, it's sharing a, a vertex neighbor together, <coughs> it's not a problem. So it has almost all earlier neighbors. And the closed neighborhood of each has and most delta g vertices other than vi. So this has at most delta neighbors, and then one of them is already exhausted here. So this has delta minus one neighbors other than this itself. So altogether, it has delta g vertices in the closed neighborhood. Hence, and most 1 plus r times delta g colors are used. Then by the construction, this coloring is proper. And also consider a uh, three vertex path x y g in g say g is greater than x so by i mean without loss of generality we can flip the paths if you want so i mean by giving the different name so we assume that the g is later than x. If y is before g, say if y precedes g, then g was given a color different from x because we have x and g and y could be here or here it doesn't matter and in any way if we have this then when we choose the color for g we avoid the neighbor close neighbor i mean colors in the close neighborhood of this y so we avoid the color of x as well so g has different color Otherwise, if y is in here, which is later than g, then both edges point towards y. Hence, the coloring is on in coloring for d. So, together with the previous lemma, this shows that we found the star coloring with at most this many colors. So this gives us an upper bound. And then as a corollary, we get a quadratic upper bound. That uh, graph is a Star chromatic number is at most maximum degree square minus maximum degree plus two. <coughs> so we can easily prove this. I mean, assume G is connected. If not, then we just apply to each component, then this is good. And we take a, so assume G connected. Take an ascending ordering. for say some vertex P. Then say you have this P1, P2 to say this Pn, which is P. Give me a moment. 
in this ordering, we know that each vertex other than Vn, so other than the last vertex V, has a later neighbor, at least one later neighbor. It has a most delta minus one earlier neighbor. We orient all edges from earlier neighbors to later neighbor. Then every vertex except V has in degree and most delta minus one, and it is on a cyclic orientation. And by applying the previous theorem to G minus B with the orientation induced by this acyclic orientation and give a new color to B. Then we get the, I mean, one plus r times delta plus one new color is at most delta square minus delta plus two. So you get the desired upper bound. <coughs> so this shows some, I mean, upper bound, quadratic upper bound on this star chromatic number.